hello hello everybody welcome to my youtube channel i am zakaria the ghost please guys remember the picture that i am sharing with you because the story that i am going to tell it will come back to these pictures because now i am continuing with the story that i promised that i will do part two before i sleep because now the time is 0446 it's 14 minutes to 5 and now we are on tuesday morning like i was telling you the story on part one so i will continue with part two and when i finish recording this i will make sure that i upload it before i go to sleep now after you know seeing the old man you know surfing or surfing in this river lake waval i went there to visit the river where i told you that god or the prophet told me that god will send the angels to protect me you know i went there everything went well and after some couple of weeks then i started to see the old man again and this old man had long beard <clears throat> the old man had long beard and he was not tall and his beard they were white as i remember them and while he's busy surfing he was always looking at me direct so i was told that i should go there again because i had this thing guys i don't know if it happens to to many people whereby i just meet people and they just start to prophesy me they tell me you know things because i remember there was a time when i was working at this other shop uh at tembisa i'm trying to remember the name of the shop so i was working in that shop and there was this other old woman she's about she was about 50 during that time and she wanted to come and and, and buy the margarines and milk because of she said there are some other traditional healers who are coming to her place and she has to do a ceremony or something and she wants to make you know scones for them and she gave me the list i took the list and i started to help her you know she was just telling me what she wants and i was taking it out of the fridge and i was just packing it nicely into a basket whereby she can carry everything you know without any disturbance or dropping things on the floor and while i'm putting things into that basket she look at me and she smiled and i was like okay what is really going on and she said you know can i tell you something i said yes you can tell me anything she said do you see this red and and white beads that i'm wearing on my arms i'm like yeah i see them she said one day she was sleeping and when she woke up she found them under her pillow the same with the ones that she's wearing on her her legs and she said the ones that she's wearing on her neck the necklace she was sitting outside and the bed <clears throat> was busy you know on top of the tree making loud noise and she looked up only to find out that there was red and white beads which were hanging on the tree she went there to take that red and white beads and she wore them and i was just listening to her and she said i am not telling anyone this story but i'm telling you because of i see who you are and i feel good you know even if i can share this story with you because of i see your journey i can see your grandfather and she started talking to me about you know the river and she told me a lot of things that i cannot even mention here because i'm just trying to stick to the story so after some couple of weeks i went back to the river because i kept on seeing this old man and also the old woman that was talking to me in that shop you know she told me some stuff and she said go back there and when you go there don't go to the place where you went before you need to go to a place under the bridge you will find people there 
But when you find those people, they are not going to treat you right. They are not going to like you. They are going to treat you very bad. But you must be very patient. Because those people there, they are going to help you with things that you cannot do them when you are there on your own. And your ancestors, they want you to go specifically to those people because they will help you. <clears throat> but be patient. Whatever they're doing to you, don't reply, don't fight back. Just be humble and they're going to help you. Okay, I went there because of I was directed to go there. And when I arrived, I found people way older than me. You know, they were sitting there. There was fire. I arrived there, greeted them, and they were not happy. I can see their face that they are not happy to see me, you know. Now they were asking me, what are you here to do? I'm like saying, I'm here to pray. They said, pray, because of I was just a kid. For them, they don't see like the 19-year-olds, the 18-year-olds, you know, go into the river alone. So it was something that, you know, they doubted me a lot. And I arrived there, it was like around past five to six, you know, in the evening. Then when it's, it's like eight, nine, they said to me, you cannot just come from the location and come and spend a night here with us. We don't even know who you are, you know. You need to go there to the river and you need to go and wash first. Because we are not even comfortable sitting with you. You know, I went down. It was winter. Took off my clothes. And I went to wash. And now this place is a bit deep. So I went straight to the river and I went there to wash. And I realized something. That when I was there, down there, I was alone. There was no one who was there helping me. Because of I saw that by the time I was sitting down. When they were going to that place, they were going two two. You know, they were like helping each other, or maybe there will be three people going down to, to, to that place. Because the place is dangerous, you know. But I'm gonna share the story. You will hear why am I saying the place is, is dangerous. So now I spend more than 30 minutes and I'm naked, I'm inside the water. Those guys they just kept on asking, Are you okay there? And I replied, say, Mrenaka, like, means my Lord. Yes, my Lord. So, the reason why they didn't come there is because of they were hoping that they will hear me scream. They were hoping that the landlord will take me because of that place takes people all the time. People die all the time to that place. So, I kept my cool. It was cold, and I pray in silence. And after about 30 minutes, they realize that, okay, if he's been there for that long and he is still alive, that means the landlord is not going to take him. You know, and they called me. They said, now you can come back. So I went back there. They said, don't, don't wear clothes. Don't wear clothes. Just wait. You see these plastics here? I decided to take this picture during that time because of I knew that I'm going to use this maybe one day. So they were putting stones, you know, into the fire, making sure that the stone will turn red. They had the bucket ready there, the pour water in the bucket, and they put those stones inside, you know, that bucket full of water, and it will make a steam. It's like the African way of steaming. Because I know now we are in the gyms, you just go to the room and somebody will open, there will be, you know, the hot steam that comes there. It's called steaming. But we used to steam like this back in the days. So now, there were guys who were standing beside me this time and making sure that they hold the plastic so that I cannot run away from the steam. But one thing for sure that I know, because they thought I'm just new, I always know, know that that stone makes the water boil in there and if you make a mistake you try to run away you will fall and that water will burn you so one thing that you need to do, do is to stand still 
wherever you are, the heat will go up to the plastic. And the plastic will hold all the heat and it will come back to you. And the most important thing that you need to know is to hold the ears. Because ears are burning like nobody's business. Ears are so painful. And also, these guys, they put all these type of things that they mix when they put there. And also, breathing is very important because if you start by opening your mouth and breathing with your mouth, you will start coughing and you will never recover from that. So I knew that and I started breathing with my nose. I started breathing with my nose gently. And in that way, I managed to survive the steamer for a long time. Because they decided to put me there. Because they are, I remember their ways they were saying, Rinsas like they are removing all these things that I'm carrying behind me. You know what I'm saying? Like in, in Africa, there is these things that mostly when people see people, they are saying maybe you have a monkey on your back or, or you you have you know, something that you're carrying on your back that gives you bad luck. And we want to make sure that we burn that thing in you. And most people die and others, they, 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 they become injured because of, they will not let you out of that plastic. If you want to come out, they're saying, no, is this thing which is forcing you to say you want to come out, don't open the plastic. So I was in that situation, but I decided to keep quiet. I decided to pray. And my prayer was like saying, dear God, if you send me here and these guys are doing all of these things to me, you know, I, I give all to you. You know, it's in your hands. Do what you like. Yes, I remember my, my weight was like, dear God, do what you like. And I stayed there for that long and I survived that. I went back, sat down with guys. And one thing which happened, there was this other old man who was very angry. He looked into my eyes. He was very angry. And he said to me, whatever happened between your mother and your father is none of your business. I looked at him and I said, yes. He said, whatever happened between your mom and your dad is none of your business. Because of when I look at you, I see the mud house. I see the mud house which has been left for many years and no one stays in that mud house. And I see that you are very angry at your father. And you don't know nothing. All you know is only the story from your mother's side. You don't know what happened between your mother and your father. And I see you are also going up and down with the papers. Because I see you are doing films. You are doing movies. You go into places like NYDA. They are not going to give you money. The money they are promising you that they will give you. They are not going to give you that money. You need to go and fix things between you and your father. Your father is at a place called Messina. You need to go to Messina. Look for your father. When you arrive there, when you find him, you need to make sure that you buy him two beers. If he can drink those two beers, he will start talking to you. He will be happy. He will share things that you always wanted to know. And you will set him free. Because of wherever he is, he is crying every day. Because they are telling him that your son your son is crying and your son is not happy wherever he is. And your things are not going to go right. So you need to go and release the old man. Because ever since your mother and your father fought, you have been very angry at your father. Go and see the old man. Buy him two beers. Only two. And... I listened to exactly what he said. And he said, and after you see your father, your father need to make a ceremony. He has to have this ceremony where they will slaughter a goat, where he will introduce you properly to your ancestors. 
because your ancestors are not at peace. Your ancestors are every day taking you up and down. You need to be connected with your ancestors so that you can find peace, so that you can have your own company, so that you can do your things just like other kids. Don't you want to be like other kids where you can have freedom, where you can drive your own cars? And I was like, I want to be like other kids. And he told me that you are the one who must go there to your father's place and fix your father's house and stay there So until they come and do that ceremony whereby they will slaughter a goat. But I'm warning you, because the place that you are going to, you will find lions there. That place is already taken. Your father's house, your father's land is already taken by neighbors. And they will do everything in their power to take that land away from you. They will fight you. But I am God. I am sending you there. Because of I know you will win. There is no one in your family that I can allow to go there and fight a battle against those people. Go and look for your father, my son. I took a taxi. I went to Messina. Because of I asked some cousins, you know, those who saw my father at Messina, and they told me that they saw him at a place called Mazoale in Messina. I arrived there at Messina town, and I asked people, where can I get taxis? And they directed me. They said, no, go there. The taxis are there. And I asked the driver about a place where they say they see, they see him a lot. He's just drinking a lot to that place. It's called Blue. It's like Blue House, if I'm not mistaken. And I asked the driver to drop me there. And he said, no problem. He knows the place. And after I arrived at the Blue House, I started asking the neighbors. I'm looking for so-and-so. I'm looking for so-and-so. They don't know the name, but I kept on asking until I saw the other house where they are fixing cars. And I remember they told me that he had a Toyota Crescida, the brown one. And I went to the mechanic, and the mechanic said, no, I remember him. When I see you, it's like I see your father. So he called other people who were working there, and they were so happy when they said, man, when you look at this boy, who do you remember? You know, I just reminded them, my father, and they said they don't know where he stay. But he used to go there and fix his car there, his Toyota Crescida. But they told me, they showed me where he used to turn all the time. They said he comes from this direction. When he reached that stop sign, he always turned to the right. So if you're looking for your father, go and turn to the right, right there, and keep asking when you go down there. I did that, and while I was busy walking, I saw this other lady, she was sitting, you know, under the tree. And I asked the woman, she just looked at me, she laughed, and she screamed like, you know, I'm somebody who just did something wrong, or I'm a child or something. And one thing that she said, I'll never forget. She said, I told him, that he cannot make children everywhere and run away and leave them. And I understood that actually that woman has a relationship with my father. And that woman told me that my father used to stay to that room, but now he is no longer staying here. He moved. He went to another place. And she called her youngest son and she said, no, go with this gentleman, your uncle, to so-and-so's place, my father's place, so that they can show me where he stay. You know, I had a little bit of a doubt that that young man, he might be my younger brother, you know. And I saw how happy he was when we were busy walking, me and him. He showed me exactly where my father stay. And when I arrived, I find out that he was just renting a shack, you know. All my life, I've known, you know, my father as a bricklayer. He has been building hospitals, building, 
you know, schools, but he never built his own house. All his life, I w- by the time I was born, I knew that my father was waking in Johannesburg. They were building malls and all these type of things. Even at home, they are the ones who build, you know, the house of the king in the rural area. In the rural area, the village where I grew up at. And now, the house that you see there is the only house that he built before he will break up with my mother. But, you know, sometimes you cannot blame them much because they, they broke up like 90 what? 90, 90, 1990, 1992, somewhere there. And, and houses to that rural area, they were mostly mud house. You know, it was before they will start, you know, using, you know, this cement and, and the first bricks and everything. So now, because of since he left that house those years, that's why he couldn't even find a chance to go back and, and develop it and, and start putting a brick house. So they just left it the way it was when they separated. And that was it until I get the prophecy at this river val that i need to go and fix my father's house so when i arrived there they told me that he's still at work he's working under whatever construction so i waited until six o'clock and he arrived when he saw me you know for the first time i saw you know tears in his eyes and he said my son traveled all the way from johannesburg looking for me while I should be the one looking for my son. Those was his words. You know, for the first time I saw him, you know, with tears in his eyes. And he was happy to see me. You know, he was very happy to see me. And I was also happy to to see him. We sat next to the fire, me and him, my stepmother, and my younger sister, because he had another child now with my stepmother. So we started to talk about things. And he said, you know what? Let me buy you a drink. And I was like, okay, no problem. So we went to the shop. I took my Coke bottle. So he bought me a cold drink and he bought himself beer. We sat down and he was drinking his beer. Everything was fine. And he said, you know what? I want to go and get the second one. And we went to the shop together. He bought the second one. And while he was drinking it, I was happy. Because now what they told me about two beers, it happened. Because even if when he was buying the second one, he said, no, I'm buying the second one. I'm not drinking too much. Today I'm with you. And in my heart, I was happy. Because I knew that everything will, will go smooth. Because they told me that if he will drink those two beers, you buy him those two beers and he drink them. That means your your ceremony will will be success you know your trip will be success but if you arrive there you find him and that is that was actually the sign of if he drink those two beers you know it will be a success and if he doesn't drink on that day you know that your ceremony cannot be a success and after he drank and i was happy and he said look we are not going to sleep in the shack with your stepmother and your sister. You and I, we are going to sleep in this room. Because the landlord, the, the person who he was renting at, was building a brick, you know, house. But at that time, the house didn't have a roof, you know, because he was still building. And my father asked me, will you be okay if we sleep in this room? I'm like, yeah, no problem, we can sleep. Because he see me as this young man who spent all his life in, in Johannesburg. And he doesn't know that I go and, and spend night under the bridge at the river. You know, I saw how he was feeling sorry for me when we were sleeping, you know, in that room where there is no roof. And that's where he started sharing so many things with me. You know, he started sharing so many things with me. He told me about the situation between him and my mother. And he told me about the situation between him and my stepmother. And he told me that, you know, several times he was just sick. And he goes to different people, especially these ones who you see them at the forest. Those who were all white. And they always say the same thing. 
you need to meet your son. If you can meet your son, you know, your problems will be gone. Because right now, you are struggling with your feet. But these are not actually feet. And if you go to doctors, they don't see anything. The problem is your child. You need to fix whatever you have with your son so that you can be free. So when he saw me there, he was so happy. And I told him that, look, the reason why I am here is because of we need to, you know, do this ceremony whereby we will slaughter a goat. And right away, he didn't even think twice. He was like saying, yeah, you see, now you're talking. I'm going to arrange everything. Don't worry. You know what? I am waking. I'm going to give you the cut because now he's old. He has this cut for Sasa and he's also waking for construction. And he was like saying, I can even give you the card so that when you go there home, because of you saying you go home, you can fix some of the things. When I come there, I know that we have a goat and everything. And I was like, no, no, I cannot take your card. And I remember he used to send me money with post, post office so that I can do stuff. And I remember asking him a question like, how come you, you get the grant money? Because you are not even, you know supposed to be getting grant money and he looked at me and he smiled he said uh the day they were going to apply for id he was with his older brother and he decided to let the older brother be in front of him so when the older brother was telling them his age and he was listening because of they were brothers and when they asked him what year he was born he decided to put the years which are older than the older brother so ever since then they are <laughs> my father was sick man said ever since then they're always you know fighting about who is the oldest between the two because when people don't know them and they're asking who is the oldest my father always say i am the oldest and the brother, because of his short-tempered, he is always angry and wanting to fight. And my father always say, no, if you guys, you don't believe us, we can produce our IDs, you know. And he said that knowing that when they go to IDs, he is older than his brother. But by birth, he is the younger brother. So <laughs> they've been <laughs> they have been fighting ever since. And... I didn't know that, but most of the time when I'm with my uncle, he always, you know, get along with me and he will tell me that, no, no, your father, don't worry about your father. Don't put your father into our things. And when I'm with my father, that's when he started to share the whole story. Why do they also have a problem? Is that he, he used to, you know, make fun of him all the time, knowing that he is short tempered. But, you know, Everything went well to the trip and he just gave me some money so that I can go and buy the goat. And the goat that we got, we got it from my uncle's house. The same one who is the older brother to my father and my father decided to say he is older than him. He, he was just a great, great gentleman. You know, he, he just gave us a goat. He is no longer with us, you know, we... We buried him, you know, years ago, but I'm just sharing the story because, you know, he, he was, he was, he was very kind. He always respected, you know, tradition. He was the one who was even pushing for that ceremony to happen. Once he heard about the ceremony, he invited everyone so that they can come and support me so that my ceremony can be successful. And guys, you can feel free to join me when I continue with the story, when I tell you what happened when I arrived to my father's house, you know, the war between me and my neighbors, you know, I was taken to the royal court and I appreciate you guys showing me love and support.